Thank you, Viv, for your wonderful introduction, and Chris for helping me out. Um, can you hear me okay? It's a very reverberant space, I know that. I'm going to speak slowly. Um, so I'm going to read first from the book Kumukanda, um, which came out in June from Chateau in Windus. And I don't have any copies with me, but if you like the work, um, I know Dean's Gate Waterstones has some. And if they don't have any more, then go there and persuade them to get more. Um, this is the first poem in the book, which is about uh, clubbing and house music and DJs. Um, and it's a celebration of the, the DJ Larry Levan, and it's also kind of an elegy to Prince as well. Um, I think James Brown is in there some way as well. The colour of James Brown's screen. I have known you by many names, but today you are Larry Levan, your hand on the platter in the smoky room of a garage regular's memory. You're keeping when doves cry in time as you swing your hips and sweat drips from your hair the colour of James Brown's scream. King of King Street. We're still moving to the same sound, though some of us don't know it is your grave we dance on. Cutting shapes, machismo lost to the beat. Every roadman is a sweet boy if the DJ plays heartbroken at just the right time for these jaded feet. Teach us to shapeshift, leg bub. You must know I'd know your customary shuffle, that phantom limp anywhere, that I see your hand in the abandon of a couple, middle of the floor sliding, quick and slick as a skin fade by the hand of a Puerto Rican clipper man who wields a cutthroat like a paintbrush. Let us become like them, an ode to night, ordering beer in a corporeal language, from a barman who replies by sweeping his arms in an arc, Willy Ninja style. To fix a drink, our lips will yearn for, a taste we've been trying to recreate ever since. Willy Ninja, incidentally, is a very wonderful, I may even use the word fabulous, dancer. Um, he was a dancer in the ballroom house scene who is famous for popularizing Vogue alongside a certain uh, international recording artist. But um, Willy Ninja was on several TV programs around that time kind of talking about the dance form and just demonstrating it and um, if you're ever at a loose end in the uh, hallways of YouTube you can find a Willy Ninja interview and he'll make you feel that the way that you move in the world is inadequate but in a good way it's a wonderful dancer um, Speaking of dance, I might read this poem, which I don't read so much anymore. This is um, the title poem from my first pamphlet, which was called, and is called, Some Bright Elegance, which is um, a phrase that I borrowed, stole, from Amiri Baraka, from a poem of his called The Dance, and all his words ran out of it, but there was some bright elegance, the sad meat of the body made. For the screw-faced in good shoes that paper the walls of dance halls, I have little patience. I say dance, not to be seen but free, your feet are made for better things. Feel the bitterness in you lift as it did for a six-year-old Bojangles, tapping a living out of Richmond beer gardens to the delight of a crowd that wasn't lynching today but laughing at the quickness of the kid. Throw yourself into the thick, emerging pure, reduced to flesh and bone, nerve and sinew. Your folded arms understand 
music. Imagine a packed Savoy ballroom as you slide across the dusty floor, as your zoot-suited, twenties self, the feather in your hat from an ostrich, the swagger in your step from the ochre dust of a West African village. Dance for the times you've been stalked by store detectives, for a lady on a bus, for the look of disgust on the face of a boy too young to understand why he hates, only that he must. Dance for Sammy, dead and penniless, and for the thousands still scraping a buck as street corner hoofers, who, though they dance for their food, move as if it is just them and the drums talking. So every time I read that, the last line gets changed from what is printed here. And what is printed here is correct, but I guess somehow in my mind, I can't accept it, such as the uh, give and take of editing. Um, but yeah, I'm very pleased with, with my editor though, she's wonderful. She got some wonderful things out of me in working on this book, and I think this is, this is one of the things I'm proudest of that has gone into this book, because it almost didn't make it, because I kept putting it off and writing it in a particular form and not being happy with it. But finally it came together on a trip I made to Zambia, where I was born in January. Um, so the title of the collection is Kumukanda, which is a word in the Lavali language, and Kumukanda means initiation, or the initiation. And Kumukanda is the process by which boys from the Lubar Lavali tribe become men. Um, and the poem describes some of that process, but also being removed from that process as someone who was born in Zambia and moved to the UK when I was six living first in Newcastle, which is topical today, I suppose, the magpies being in town. Um, Kumukanda. Since I haven't danced among my fellow initiates, following a looped procession from woods at the edge of a village, tatters people would think me unfinished, a child who never sloughed off the childish estate. Crossing the river, boys of our tribe must cross in order to die and come back grown. I was raised in a strange land by small increments. When I bathed my mother the days she was too weak. When auntie broke the news and I chose a yellow suit and white shoes to dress my mother's body at the graveside when the man I almost grew to call Dad, though we both needed a hug, shook my hand. If my alternate self, who never left, could see me, what would he make of these literary pretensions, this need to speak in a tongue that isn't mine? Would he be strange to me as I to him? frowning as he greets me in the language of my father and my father's father and my father's father's father. Um, I'll read a few more poems from the book and then I'll read some very, very new work to finish. You're a very um, attentive audience. It's beautiful. Thank you. This is, this is a poem that I don't often read. Um, my aunt and uncle um, took over raising me um, when I was 13. And my aunt and uncle are wonderful storytellers, as is family tradition, I guess. But what's interesting about the ways in which my aunt and uncle tell stories is that they they tell stories about some of the deepest and most painful moments in their life in quite light ways, sometimes when we're just eating dinner, suddenly they'll launch into a, into a story. 
and this is where this poem comes from. It's called Curfew, and it speaks about a time when Zambia, or Northern Rhodesia as it was then, was a kind of militarized place, a British protectorate. Curfew. This was soldier curfew, he says, apropos of nothing, the way the best stories come round this table that just about holds us. Wali all but eaten, the flash of the thought, a flame lighting up his face. He rests the tip of a finger in the space between his eyes. Past curfew, there were no warning shots. Auntie chips in as if this were little more than a scene they were rehearsing. You had to have a man with you at all times, especially at night. So my cousin would walk me home in trousers and squared shoulders she could pass. She smiles a knowing smile at our scandalized faces. Faces we've bent into anguished shapes when she could smell a lie but let us improvise wildly until, hoist by our respective petards, we came clean, deferring to the knowledge of a woman who was a girl who could climb out of a window in hot pants and platforms, dance to the last ache in her legs, and make it back before the cockerel crowed morning. Um, so I'll read just one more poem from the book and then a couple that are very new. This is, this is, I think, um, one of my favorite poems in the book, simply because I do not write <clears throat> joyful poems, unambiguously joyful poems very often, but this is one, and I hope to write more. Um, but, um, the entrance into my life of my niece made me unambiguously joyful uh, in a way that is almost impossible to shake off. Um, I think about her and everything that I'm thinking about, which is troubling me, disappears for a moment. And any time we spend with each other playing dinosaurs or whatever game she's invented um, takes me out of my conscious mind. This is called Malumbo, which is kind of the Zambian or Bemba word for a kind of praise song for somebody when they're born or when they die or at some important stage in their life. Malumbo for Malaika. Your parents rejected my suggestion. I told them you could pull off Ethel. The jury is still out. Alicia out of the question. Ditto Shaniqua and Chantel. I have a soft spot for Dambisa, Malaika or Mambwe. But whatever you were called, you should know we've all been waiting for your birthday. The look on your face as you apprehend snow. I hope you hold on to your wonder. That you will never grow so stiffly poised a scent or song is not enough to conjure that smile of yours, the fullness of your voice.